What's up everybody? This is Matt Brown and we are going to be doing another IoT hacking video today. I picked up a smart scale at my local Goodwill and we're going to take it apart and show my process. Anytime I get an embedded device, what are the first things that I look at when I get that system in my hands? We're going to do that today. So without further ado, let's jump into that over on the desk. So here we can see uh, for eight bucks at my local Goodwill, I picked up this smart scale. It uh, says Fit Track here. That is the brand of this smart scale device. And you can flip it around. I, I have uh, taken this apart already uh, just to make that easier. Um, and then on the, on the back, I uh, have a model number. It says that this is a body composition smart scale, and it has a QR code here. So uh, one thing that I don't see right away uh, is an FCC ID, but we can still uh, we can still probably find this device on the FCC database. So we're going to flip over to our computer for a second. So uh, just by doing some simple Google searching, I was able to stumble uh, across this website. Uh, this is the SmartScale product page. Um, you can see that uh, I, I actually got a pretty good deal uh, getting this uh, at the price I did at Goodwill. Um, and so here's our product. It, so clearly there's going to be some sort of mobile app that is going to be related to this device. But uh, I want to try to find some open source data that is out there on this device. And a great place to start with embedded devices that you don't know anything about is the FCC database. So, uh, so we can go here to uh, this website called FCCID.io. This is not the official uh, FCC government website because that one, the search functionality is terrible. So this is like somebody else set up this website. But I can go ahead and type in the name of this company here. So I don't have an FCC ID that I observed on the device itself, but I can go and I can see that this company does have uh, some data here. And I have two devices listed, a body scale and a smartwatch. So today we're going to go click in and look at the FCC entry for this smart body scale. Um, and down here uh, we see some very useful information. This is telling us that this is going to be a Bluetooth device. There's no Wi-Fi that is present on this, uh, at least on the SOC that's related to uh, this FCC ID. Um, and so there are two links. So here we see a list of documents that are related to uh, this FCC ID entry. Uh, there's two documents that are always extremely useful to me. There's the internal photos document and then the user manual. So I actually have those two documents open over here in this other tab. So here is a user manual for this device. So if I, uh, I definitely didn't get this a copy of this user manual uh, buying this device at Goodwill. So this is going to be some very helpful information uh, if I need to refer to this. And then this internal photos it, document is also extremely useful. And we're going to see something right away here uh, that we see with many embedded devices. So over here on the devices website, this, this is a, a pretty well done, uh, English marketing website. I don't, I actually don't see very many, uh, like typos, uh, um, bad English in this website. But when we go to this internal photos page, we actually observe that uh, this is a company that is based out of uh, Guangzhou, China. Um, that is the actual manufacturer of this device, right? So uh, this website over here is just the kind of the U.S. marketing, or the North America marketing front. And then over here, the people that actually make this device are, are over here. 
overseas, right? And this is relevant for security reasons because often times that means there are not security personnel that are uh, available for you to contact if you ever find some kind of a security vulnerability in a device like this. So it can make uh, vulnerability disclosure very hard. So uh, in some of these internal photos, uh, we will get to see actually some pictures of the inside of the device, which is very useful. Uh, but what we're going to notice today, and this is something to keep in mind, is that this is actually not exactly what the inside of my device looks like. So this is most likely a pre-production unit that was run through the FCC tests, and over time they changed some things about the device, but uh, we're not required to rerun the tests. Um, and then, yes, in the FCC ID, the thing they're most concerned about, as always, is... Uh, the wireless transmissions, and so they pointed out where the antenna is on this system. Uh, find some interesting things that we do, again, we do not see on the system we're about to look at under the microscope, um, but a reference to ground, RX, TX, and voltage. So this, to me, looks like some sort of a, a serial interface, likely UART, and so uh, if we were able to find the analog of this pinout on our actual system, that could be quite useful. So, and there's just a, a view of what the LED uh, screen for the scale looks like. Um, yeah. Uh, another thing that was very interesting, so uh, when we were off the desk cam, you saw that QR code. This is where that QR code takes us. This, again, is starting to show the signs of this being a product that was manufactured in China because they give a link to this aicare.net.cn. Uh, this is not using TLS. This is not secured. So if somebody were to be conducting a man-in-the-middle attack, they could potentially uh, force someone to download a malicious version of this binary. So what this actually does is actually just redirects you to the Play Store where you can download the legitimate app. But because this is not secure, uh, somebody could very well um, trick the user into uh, downloading, again, a backdoor copy of that Android application. So this is not, not great. It's not a good start for this system. Um, but let's, let's go over back to our desk and let's take a look at this device on the inside. So when we open it up, we, we see uh, our main SOC right here. And then what's really interesting about this device is we have these all these wires going out to these four locations. So that is not merely to take weight readings, but it's also to power these electrodes. That's right, these are electrodes. And so the way this body composition uh, device works is it actually sends an electronic pulse uh, through your feet, and then it detects the resistance in your body fat, uh, and then can actually calculate to some degree of accuracy uh, how much body fat you have. Uh, kind of fascinating. Um, not really relevant to the security discussion, unless we could potentially backdoor the system to send too much current. Uh, that could be interesting. Um, but what we're, we're really interested in today is uh, this SOC right there. And it is so small, it is really hard to see. So what we are going to do is we're going to put this under the microscope and get a better look at this. So I'm gonna flip our microscope over here. To turn my light on and then we're gonna take a look at the main part of this circuit board right here we have a extremely small system on ship that is the brains of this whole operation and we're gonna try to see if I can get us to even 
focus on that. Probably have too much light. And then I'm going to use my, my flashlight to actually uh, show you right there. So there I can actually get a readout um, DA14560, I believe. But I wrote that down earlier. And so that chip ID, we can now head over to our computer and we can find, uh, I might've read that wrong. That was an eight zero. So this Bluetooth low energy, uh, 4.2 SOC, uh, this is the heart of this smart scale. This system, uh, we can go ahead and take a look at the block diagram. It uh, integrates a ARM microcontroller, uh, which it says it has uh, you know, a JTAG interface, which is very interesting. That's something we'll probably look for in a future video. But it combines this ARM microcontroller with Bluetooth low energy capabilities. Um, and then, really interestingly, uh, we see here that it does have the capabilities listed to perform uh, AES-128, which is needed for pairing to occur in Bluetooth. So this is all very relevant to what we'll look at in the future on this device. Um, and then up here in the description of the system, again, we see that this is, a full, this is fully compliant with Bluetooth 4.2. So in Bluetooth 4.2, that is when LE secure pairing was introduced. When uh, Bluetooth Low Energy was introduced in the Bluetooth 4.0 standard, it had a initial pairing algorithm, a key, a key exchange algorithm that was found to be able to be cracked in about one second on laptop hardware. So not great. And then when Bluetooth 4.2 rolled around, they're like, hey, we should probably implement something that's industry standard, like elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman for the key exchange, and then that was all fixed up. So uh, it has the capabilities to perform Bluetooth pairing, Bluetooth uh, low energy pairing, and to provide that level of security that is sufficient to protect the user's data. But the real question is, is it actually doing that? So, what we're going to do is we're going to actually scan for this Bluetooth device now. Uh, I've had this device sitting on my shelf for months, and every time I do something involving Bluetooth, I remember that, the, that this uh, smart scale is sitting over there on that shelf because it shows up as a Bluetooth device. And see, now it's not going to go because the batteries always pop out. So I'm going to head over to the desk, make sure that I pop the battery back in place. And there we see, I'll tell it to stop scanning because I can see now uh, that FitTrack device is right there. Um, it, it can see it. Um, you know, there's some other information about it, but it's clearly identifying itself as a FitTrack device, right? It's not attempting to hide uh, what this device is in any way, and now we're going to try to connect to it. Now, this device was pro implemented a proper pairing protocol. It would not let anyone connect to it and start interacting with all the services that it has. It would only allow uh, you to pair with the device and to interact with its services when it is in some sort of pairing mode. This is usually initiated by a button press. So I should not be able to do what I'm about to do. So I have now successfully connected to it. Here we can see that this is an unencrypted link. I can even attempt to pair with it. Um, and this will fail. It'll, it'll, just, it'll just sit here forever, and this will not succeed. Uh, so I'm just going to close out of that. You can see here, it is still an unencrypted link. And I can click all these drop downs, and I can view all the services on this device, and I can definitely interact with all of these services, and I can read the 
these values and um, and then obviously uh, we have some of these parameters down here that are going to require more reverse engineering to understand how to interact with these custom Bluetooth low energy services that are available on this device. And that is where uh, probably a future video will involve the reverse engineering of our Android application that we have. So um, we're going to head back over to the microscope just to just to look at some other things that we have available on the system. So we're going to zoom out so we're not so focused on that one ship. So we also observe some pads on this this uh, SOC package here. Uh, we've got you know some of these uh, some of these pads up on top, and then along the side uh, there are some additional uh, there are some additional uh, places where this could be put. Uh, in, there, there could be pins connected there. Some are not connected. Some are connected. Um, this is all something we'll take a look at in a in a for in a future video. But today I just wanted to give you a look at how I do an initial analysis and initial open source intelligence, initial research on an embedded Bluetooth device like this that I pull off the shelf at Goodwill. So. I'd like to thank everyone for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know uh, what kind of future videos you'd like me to do. If you like this content, if you like the idea of finding random devices at thrift stores and opening them up and seeing how they tick. So uh, thank you and have a great day.